Hello friends, this video on Thermal Properties of Matter Part 23 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos from Part 1 to Part 22 before going ahead with Part 23. Now let us look at certain applications. Did you know, why do we wear what light colored clothes in summer? That's because light colors generally absorb less heat when compared to dark colors. So as a result, when less heat is absorbed, the body will feel less heat and you will feel comfortable during summer. Whereas in case of winters, you would see that it is more preferable to wear black, dark blue or any other dark colored clothes. That's because they absorb more heat. So they absorb more heat and gives, give more heat to your body. So the body feels comfortable in winters in dark colored clothes. So why do we wear light colored clothes? Because they absorb less heat. As I told just now, the thermal radiation from the sun, the radiation from the sun falls on your clothes. They are partly reflected, partly absorbed, right? But in case of light colored clothes, most of the heat is reflected and less of it is absorbed. Whereas in case of dark colored clothes, most of the heat is absorbed and less of it is reflected. The same principle works even here. Why are utensils used for cooking blackened at the bottom? You would have seen it in many of your non-stick frying pans or your um, pots which you use for cooking that the below or the bottom part is blackened. That is also because when you place it on the oven or on the stove, the heat which comes up, it hits that blackened part. And this black color as such absorbs more heat. So it will absorb most of the heat and maximum amount of heat will be provided for cooking. So that maximum heat is absorbed and used up for cooking. Now after we have completed this entire lesson, we have covered almost all the topics which are there in thermal properties of matter. We started with introducing heat and temperature, went ahead with specific heat capacity, latent heat, different modes of transfer of heat. So before I conclude the chapter, I would like to discuss one or two applications where it is it is not based on one topic it is just a combined combined topics which we covered in this lesson i will just tell you one or two applications because in this particular lesson such kind of questions are very common not only common for your exams but it is also helpful for your knowledge that is where you actually apply what you study here right so let us look at the first did you know why is cooking difficult on hills? Think about it. As we discussed before, which topic is related to this? You remember, I discussed with you that boiling point increases with increase in pressure. You remember, boiling point increases with increase in pressure. Right? Now, we, this fact is an application of this concept. What happens is on heels, the altitude increases, that is the height increases. As a result, the atmospheric pressure decreases. What happens at heels? When you go to heels, the altitude increases, that is the height increases. As a result, the atmospheric pressure decreases. Now, as we know, boiling point is directly proportional to pressure. Therefore, the boiling point also decreases. Now, what happens if boiling point of water decreases? How, how do you cook? How do we generally cook? In order to cook, we want that the vegetables or the vegetables or whatever grains we have, they should get boiled. For that, we put them in water and then heat them, right? 
But since the boiling point of water will decrease drastically, so even before the vegetables or the grains are cooked, the water will start boiling. So it will not be easy to cook the vegetables or the vegetables will not get cooked because the water will start boiling very quickly even before you are able to bake the vegetables. So that is why cooking is difficult on heels. Similarly, did you ever think of why do lakes and ponds freeze at the top first? You would have observed this in your nearby lakes or ponds that the topmost layer during winters, the topmost layer freezes at first. Why is it so? Why can't all the layers freeze together or why can't the bottom layer freeze first? Why is it that the topmost layer freeze at the first? Normally what happens is when water is cooled as the temperature decreases, right? So the water keeps cooling. Now as the water is cooled, it contracts, right? So as the lake cools towards 4 degrees Celsius, water near the surface loses energy to atmosphere. So it becomes denser and it sinks. I mean, see, as the temperature is decreased, so if you de keep decreasing the temperature, what will happen? Water will contract. Now as water contracts, it will become more, it will become denser. Now, when it becomes denser, it sinks, right? It will not float. When it becomes more dense, it will go down or it will sink. So what happens is the topmost layer, as the temperature decreases, the topmost layer of water, it will contract, it will become denser and it will sink to the bottom. Then what happens? The warmer and the less denser water comes up. Suppose if this is the topmost layer, the topmost layer contracts, it becomes denser and it goes down. So the layer which is at the bottom, it being less denser, it comes up. Right? Now what happens? This phenomenon takes place when the temperature decreases. But this phenomenon takes place only till 4 degrees Celsius. After 4 degrees Celsius, when the temperature further reduces till 0 degree, the water does not contract. Instead, it expands, right? So let us suppose the topmost layer which became denser and went down. After that, the less denser water came up. But meanwhile, the temperature reduced below 4 degrees Celsius. Then what will happen? Water will start expanding. So it will become less denser and it will not go down. So that water will remain there till it reaches 0 degrees Celsius. Once it reaches 0 degrees Celsius, it will form ice and therefore it seems that the water at the top layer freezes. I hope you understood. I'll explain it once again. Let us suppose the temperature is decreasing. Say the temperature was initially 50 degrees Celsius. It started decreasing. So what will happen to the water? The water at the topmost layer with decrease in temperature, it will contract. It will lose energy to the atmosphere. It will become denser and it will sink to the bottom. As a result, the lower layers of water, which are less denser, will come up. But meanwhile, when the less denser water comes up, the temperature reduces below 4 degrees Celsius. Now, as the temperature decreases below 4 degrees Celsius, the water has an exceptional behavior, right? The water starts expanding from 4 degree to 0 degree. Now, as water starts expanding, it becomes less denser and it does not sink. So what happens? That layer of water stays on the surface and the temperature when reaches 0 degrees Celsius, it freezes. So we can see that the layer at the top freezes at the first. Let us look at yet another application. Do you know why is water used as a coolant in automobile radiators? as well as a heater in hot water baths. It's a contradiction, right? A, a substance which is used as a coolant is again used as a heater. Why is it so? That's because water has high specific heat capacity. Therefore, water warms up more slowly and it cools down more slowly. So water is an object which has high specific heat capacity. So water has high specific heat capacity. 
Please recall quickly what is specific heat capacity. It is the amount of heat that is required to heat a particular amount of a substance by some specific temperature. So water has very high specific heat capacity. As a result, water warms up slowly and it cools down as well very slowly. So because of these two properties, it can act as a coolant in automobiles because it will cool down gradually as well as a heater in hot water bag. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.